For this week's clinical file, we have Janie, and Janie is performing a postural assessment on a patient who has a medical diagnosis of lumbago. When assessing lower extremity alignment, the plumb line should fall, and so we have A, anteriorly to the lumbar spine, B, posteriorly to the hip, C, through the hip joint line, and D, is posteriorly to the knee. All right, so let's knock this one down. Starting off at the top, we know that we're dealing with a bit of postural assessment on this one. Uh, so hold on, before we knock down this question, this is one of those types of questions that can sometimes be a little on the annoying side because you know you've seen it before, you know you've kind of gone through this stuff before, whether it was in your patient care skills class or whatever they called it, right? Um, so it's stuff that we've seen before, but you might not have seen it in a while. So it shows up on the MPTE and you're like, ah, dang, this, okay? So that's the reason why I made this into a question. So let's break it down. Janie is performing a postural assessment on uh, a patient who has a medical diagnosis of lumbago. So let's go ahead and stop and understand what we just read. Postural assessment, pretty straightforward, um, but a medical diagnosis of lumbago. Now, I don't want that to slow you up at all. I don't want you to kind of get crazy. Lumbago is just a medical term, another name for lower back pain uh, that we kind of don't know what's going on, all right? So we call it nonspecific lower back pain. All right, and so there you go. You probably have seen it come across one of your referrals uh, in the outpatient ortho uh, clinic. So there you go, medical diagnosis of lumbago. Now it says, when assessing lower extremity alignment, the plumb line should fall. When assessing lower extremity alignment, the plumb line should fall. And for those of you on the podcast, let me go through the answer choice again. We got A, anteriorly to the lumbar spine. B is posteriorly to the hip. Uh, C is through the hip joint line. And D is posteriorly to the knee. Before we really start knocking down these answer choices, though, I, I want you to go back up to this question really quick. I don't want you to get confused because sometimes when they ask questions, you're so wrapped up in this whole lumbago, lower back pain, what does that have to do with things, that you really are not paying attention to what the question's asking. The question's not asking you about lumbago. It don't even matter if you knew that or didn't know that. The question's really saying, when you're looking at somebody's lower extremity alignment, where should this plumb line fall? That's what it's asking you. I don't give a darn about the lamego, okay? It doesn't really help you. So you can go ahead and wipe that out of the question and just answer. Lower extremity alignment, the plumb line should fall, and then we got our answer choice, okay? So let's look at A. A says anteriorly to the lumbar spine. So let me ask you, should the plumb line fall anteriorly to the lumbar spine? Yeah, again, this is kind of going back to, like I said, that patient care skills class that you had, all right? You may or may not remember this. If you're not familiar with the plumb line, it's really something that we use in order to see like where the line of gravity is falling, right? When we're looking at somebody's postural assessment. And so it's really great for us determining, okay, does the person have forward head posture? Does the person have thoracic kyphosis? Like it allows us to determine a lot of those postural abnormalities, okay? And so my question to you is, should the, pump, uh, the plumb line fall anteriorly to the lumbar spine? The answer to that is, is actually no. All right, it should fall posterior to the lumbar spine. Mm -hmm. So put that down in your notes for sure. Let's go down to B. B says posteriorly to the hip. Is that correct? Now, there's one thing that I remember. We went over this in school, man. It, we were looking at the sacrum. We were looking at the lumbar spine. We were looking at the hip. And the one thing I always remember is that when you're dealing with the sacral iliac joint, the plumb line should fall anteriorly to that, right? And 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 when you're looking at the hip, the plumb line should fall posteriorly to it. Let me say that again. So the plumb line should fall anteriorly to the sacroiliac joint, but posteriorly to the hip. So I like B 
it looks like a nice answer for now. Doesn't mean it's correct or the best one. Let's continue through. C says through the hip joint line. Mm, I don't like that one. All right, I don't like that one because I know that the plumb line should fall posterior, not through it. Posterior to the hip joint, not through it. So let's go ahead and put an X next to that one. Last answer here, it says D, posteriorly to the knee. Mm, another great one. But the plumb line should actually fall anterior to the knee. And it also falls anterior to the ankle as well, all right? And so that doesn't make sense, leaving us with our final answer is B as in boy, posteriorly to the hip. All right, there you go. Now, I know that this is one of these straight up questions right here. And I, I the reason why I put this in here is because it's a sneaky one. It's a freaking sneaky one. It's something that you may not have looked at in a while, but it shows up on the exam. And this is just that, that awakening right now. This is that awareness for you that do not forget little things like this. All right. Now, here's, here's the major piece. Sometimes I'll get students, they'll, they'll contact me, whether it's an email or whatnot. I'll get on the phone with some of them and they'll say, hey, coach, um, I'm really, you know, trying to wonder how these questions are really going to be on the MPTE. Or are they going to be really like thick with all this information in it? Or are there going to be some of them that are just like straight up questions? And here's the deal. You are going to have a mixture of them. Sometimes it'll be straight up. Just like this, patient has lumbago, looking at lower extremity alignment, where does the plumb line fall or where should it fall? Straight up, right? And you will get these sometimes and then you just have to have that understanding in order to get these questions correct. So you will get those, all right? So you know, you will get those, uh, but then you'll get more uh, you know, detailed types of questions as well. So we need to be ready for both sides of the fence here. And this is an example of the type of question that you could get showing up on your exam. All right. But I never want to leave you with that. For those of you on the podcast right now, uh, what I did was I put together a nice uh, cheat sheet for you uh, that's going to have this whole plumb line and all the major joints and where the plumb line should fall, line of gravity. Um, I also added in there what muscles should be active you know, in order to keep the patient balanced, right? Because, of course, we don't want the patient to fall fall down, right? So there must be muscles that are active just in quiet standing. I want to go ahead and put those on there for you as well, okay? So go into the show notes, click the link in there, and you can get it.